optically transparent and very conductive. Basically, it's a Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prize winning material in 2010, and currently it's used in different disciplines: the solar cells, different electronics, in medic, in med different type of med biomedical applications. But I will primarily talk about the, uh, the devices which can be used in visual representation of the data. And uh, I will present the patent that we recently, yeah, we recently filed. So basically, this is a new type of uh, uh, display, as you can name. It's totally organic. And what is remarkable about this device is it's paper thin. It's completely uh, organic. And um, uh, after this research, we realized that actually this type of display can be completely um, shift the whole industry because currently the whole commercial industry is heavily based on metal oxide materials, which are brutal. They are uh, they are not biocompatible and they bring a set of characteristics which are not favorable for the uh, for the like our vision of seeing the future of our electronics and solar panels and. Graphene, which is like one dimensional materials, which is almost transparent and it's amazingly conductive, can offer a new set of properties that we require. So we filed this patent and as Richard already mentioned with Cambridge Enterprise, they hugely helped us. I think the process was around one year. We met at them and they did a big of research to understand whether the device that we are preparing is already filed, whether there is an interest from industry. So, um, and uh, the interesting thing is actually when I, I made the device uh, and I didn't realize that this, uh, this technology that I just made is, can be used anywhere because for me it was just like piece of technology that I was developing and I was like learning because this research is so relatively new uh, and there is no any fundamental research to go towards and there is no any fundamental uh, understanding about this material because as I already mentioned it's just recently um, recently uh, like uh, established technology and uh, actually the growing of the, this material is uh, still very challenging and um, currently these are the applications that can be used. The first one is, I already mentioned, is new generation of new type of displays which can be transparent, flexible and very thin and they also consume almost no energy because it's just so thin it doesn't require high voltages to work. And the other uh, technology of obviously hybrid solar cells based on uh, nano-engineer structures and um, uh, actually they are right now I think the the best uh, research in Cambridge University is around 8%. The best uh, efficiency we are getting from polymer-based structures is 8%, which is quite impressive. Because with silicon-based, uh, the best the best one which is uh, currently used are 24%. And we, we couldn't get higher for that. And with this set of uh, properties and with this set of nano-engineer structures, so far we got 8% and we still can grow and learn from our mistakes. So, um, basically, the infrastructure of um, Cambridge, uh, basically, this is everything I'm presenting is my personal experience and the challenges I faced in Cambridge University. So, I, the first one, as Richard already mentioned, is Cambridge Enterprise. It's a really big, uh, big institution. And uh, it's university basically run organization which helps students and academics uh, to commercialize their ideas. So you can approach them with an idea, you can approach them if you already have a business plan or you are struggling with something and you can approach them if you already in a C stage and you still require some funding. Basically in every stage of development they can help you. But at the same time um, they are not pushing. So uh, Richard uh, mentioned that there are all the posters all around university, so they kind of push students to, to, uh, to commercialize their ideas. I have to tell you that in my personal experience, they don't. They are very, they are very helpful, they are very uh, like comforting, and they help with all the resources they have, but at the same time, it's not like working in commercial research center, like for example, the Samsung in South Korea, that you have to publish at least two paper, patents per year, it's not like that. So in that sense, uh, and, and from, the, from the beginning, the challenge for me was, I thought that the, the research that I did and the, the ideas that I have, it's not as novel as it can be, because for me, it was like 
one year of research and I just started learning how to do the chemical vapor deposition of the material because basically you are starting is that you're engineering material you are, you are like like architecture like architect you are working from the scratch first you learn what kind of gases you need to use to actually grow material. It's, it's a chemical vapor deposition process and I use methane as a source of a gas and during which basically under high temperature and high uh, pressure this gas decomposes and nucleates and creates this amazing layer of graphene and then you transfer this graphene to different substrate it can be polymer, it can be silicon, it can be just glass and then you do later characterization you prepare uh, these kind of structures one one is in a graphene and the other it and, and you can use uh, all of these uh, structures you can use liquid crystal materials depending what what you are aiming for and depending what are the uh, disciplines that that you are working i'm sorry i'm just ge getting away from the topic but basically uh, for me uh, it was like more learning and doing a procedure and I didn't realize from the beginning that actually, yes, this is the research you can commercialize. So from the beginning, like it was a bit push from my supervisor and uh, like a senior academics who actually told that, yes, Malia, you need to apply because this is quite novel and we have to do that right now. And we quickly applied. We had a couple of meetings. They did the research and th then approached me saying, yes, yes. So right now, this is there is no single uh, patent or single publication on this so we quickly need to start uh, uh, basically uh, preparing the documents so in that sense cambridge enterprise was very very useful for me and i think they still useful because if they are constantly approaching to ask how we are doing whether we need some consultancy or something like that so they are very very uh, i think they are very useful especially for early stage uh, researchers like me who just started doing like experimental work and in a, like in the stage of being sl uh, slightly hesitant about the quality of the work so the second one is actually multi module um, which i took during my mphil course it's management of technology and innovation from judge business school which included nine different subjects, uh, uh, starting from like account accountancy, financial, uh, budgeting, etc., from uh, management of technology, innovation, leadership, etc. And that is, that was actually very useful for me because from the beginning they they uh, they gave us practical knowledge. We didn't have to read a lot of like fi uh, books about finance, and we didn't really need to go beyond the concept to understand. It was very useful and the second part for me was like remarkable just because we worked with a local startup based in Cambridge it was a high-tech startup based in business park and uh, we, we did three months of consultancy project and uh, the task uh, they gave us was quite challenging for me especially because they wanted they had this uh, product they wanted to enter to Asian market and so far they were successful in Europe, but they didn't know the competitors, they didn't know the market, they never done a market research. And for us, it was a bit challenging from the beginning because most of the documents that we wanted, everything was in Chinese, right? The important documents from the government were Chinese, but we were lucky so to get one Chinese student and he was constantly calling to China, getting information. So we did like, we did such a, for me personally, I learned a lot working with like different nationalities, different characters. And I, I was leading the group that was, it for me, it was very interesting. The third one um, I, is still going on. It's every year, it's Cambridge, uh, like Enterprise Tuesdays. Every, basically Tuesday is series of lectures and networking events with different academics, uh, very successful entrepreneurs. They are coming and talking about their success stories. However, they also focus on their failures what they did wrong and how what they learned from that and it's like three hours meeting and by the end of you can just approach and ask them whatever you want basically the accelerate cambridge is another very interesting event it's um, if you have an idea and you think it's possible to commercialize this is the uh, program you approach it's three months intensive course during which you go from idea to realization realization and it's very very intensive and you work in a group of different like small small startups 
and actually it's kind of they bring a lot of power and enthusiasm to these small groups and it's very very powerful to see how everything is going from idea to actually the product this actually this ignit is uh, very new fairly new it's i think it's the one week training program for all ready made startups who want to freshen up their ideas they want to do some uh, new um, and it, the new people to get involved, they want some consultancy and obviously they venture creation weekends. I, I participated once. I, I, I wasn't uh, establishing any startup or I didn't want to at that stage. But the venture creation weekends is very useful just because even though you are not interested, but you are genuinely interested to do that in some point, this is the event that you go to because this is like very heavily packed weekend. And you, the whole weekend, you talk about uh, startup development. And um, yeah, actually, this presentation was heavily uh, prepared for a student. So like this one was basically this last slide. I put this because during the summer, I was working with kids in Dilijan, teaching them nanotechnology, like kids from 12 to like 16 years. And it's quite challenging because you need to talk in a simple term so that they will understand. And I came up with a video which actually uh, we taught kids uh, what nanotechnology is and why it can be interesting for them. And by the end, actually, it was like it was ending with a quote like, your only limitation is your imagination, especially working in area of nanotechnology, which can you de can develop a material with the whole set of properties that you want. We just need to address problem in the right angle. So this is why I put this one. Thank you very much. So thank you, Amalia. Uh, inspirational indeed. Uh, nano stuff, but mega excitement. Uh, so the, yeah, thank you. I think that I that concludes the what's a formal part of our uh, the presentations of our speakers. So thank you uh, very much to all. Uh, and, and maybe then what we could we could do next is uh, question and answers, uh, primarily for our guests as moderator. I might just step back and.